Hello, my name is Sosa Juvonen, and in this particular video, we'll have a look on the new Bulk User Profile Application Custom Profile Properties Update API. Um, it's a long term uh, for a functionality which will actually help you to migrate a custom attributes or user profile values from any uh, line of business system like HR system from on-premises to SharePoint Online. The easiest way you can access this source code, which we will have a look on here, uh, is by going to the dev.office.com, click resources, patterns and practices, and in the patterns and practices code example search, uh, you can just use the term uh, like uh, user profile, uh, and you'll see this user profile patch update API available within the patterns and practices samples. So I'm going to click that one, uh, and we'll see a short summary on the on the functionality and the sample and that's also pinpointed into the github location where the actual source code uh, is existing so the user profile patch update api or whatever we actually want to call this will help you to migrate uh, information uh, from the lob systems or uh, active directory from on premises or from azure to user profiles in the in the sharepoint online and this is needed because uh, you cannot modify which attributes are getting synchronized from the Azure Active Directory to the SharePoint uh, Online User Profile Store. So let's have a look on the on the functionality first uh, from a code perspective, and then we'll have a look on on the individual functionalities. So here we go. Here's the sample. Uh, so this is solution uh, user profile patch update API, uh, and this is like mentioned. This is a sample code, which is showing how the API actually works. So first of all, what we need is our source file. Uh, the source file uh, is in a JSON format, uh, and this is a relatively simple source file, but it demonstrates uh, the API behavior. So we do have a, a uh, individual uh, values uh, or individual properties for individual persons. In this particular sample case, we're using the email as the identifier to find the target user profile in the user profile store within a SharePoint Online, uh, to which will then update uh, these additional attributes. Um, I have here a, a intentionally a one uh, unknown uh, address, uh, so you'll see also the exception handling, so how things are actually executed if there's any persons who've left uh, the company or for a reason or another there's a mistake within the email, which is within the format or within the JSON file. But the target is essentially to get uh, the profile property uh, or these properties one and two updated to the user profile uh, properties within the SharePoint Online site. Before we actually run the code, uh, there is one requirement for the target properties. So let's actually jump back on the, uh, on the browser and I'm going to actually show you that one uh, from the tenant administrative side. So if you go to the SharePoint Admin Center, if you go to the user profiles and then have a look on the user profile properties, we can only target uh, or update user profile properties which are not editable by the end users. Um, technically, you can update also attributes which are getting replicated automatically from the Azure Active Directory, but that doesn't really make any sense. So as an example, in this demo, we can update the city and office attributes uh, which are available within the user profile profile store. So for example, for the city attribute, uh, which could indicate on which location the office uh, of the particular person is located, we need to have that property not editable by the end user. So if I click the edit button uh, or edit uh, for the property, uh, we can then go and see uh, the property settings. So this is a custom property which we don't have by default in the SharePoint Online. I've created that uh, pretty recently in my tenant. It has a name of city, display name city, length is 255 characters. And then the key point is the following setting here. So uh, this is not allowed users to edit because otherwise you might end up in a situation where you are actually, or the end users are modifying those values and then your batch operation, which could, for example, run daily to synchronize some values from your HR system would then override those settings within the SharePoint Online. 
Good. Uh, to be able to use the API, uh, we need to get that source file, the JSON file, located somewhere within that particular tenant. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, what I've done is that I've uploaded uh, that uh, sample TXT file, which is part of the uh, sample available from the patterns and practices, to a document library. This is our out-of-the-box team site uh, document library, uh, and we have that sample file here available. So we can use that as the source file uh, or pinpoint the API to actually read that file whenever the timer job in server side uh, will start processing the files. We do have here a few folders which I'm going to explain slightly later, but these are actually log entries from the previous executions. So if there has been, for example, an, an exceptions or errors when uh, that file has been processed, those exceptions and errors will be shown within these log files. So you really want to kind of think through where you want to store this file uh, because those folders are going to be generated there based on all of the executions. And you also want to have a, a automated way um, or think through how do you archive or delete these log files as well. By default, the API doesn't do that, which is something to be aware. Um, and that's absolutely a great opportunity for community uh, development, maybe to have an Azure web-based, web job-based implementation, which is then reading a file if it has modifications and also deletes the old log files. But let's have a look on the, on the actual CSM, new CSM API. So I'm going to jump back on the Visual Studio uh, and I'm going to open up my program CS file, which is actually having the business logic. So this is relatively simple uh, program. It's asking me which tenant, which username, which password and the file located in your tenant. And after that, it starts processing the file. So let's actually run through that together so you are able to see how the, how the sample actually works. One thing what I wanted to pinpoint here is that um, if we have a look, quickly look on the, on the uh, Nougat packages, so we do have a reference uh, to Microsoft SharePoint Online CSAM and the minimum version which you need to use uh, is the 16.1.4727. Uh, the CSAM version was released already back in, if I remember correctly, December 2015 and now the server-side capabilities are enabled in April 2016. You can absolutely use a newer version as well uh, if needed. Let's go back on the program CS. I'm going to do an F5, uh, start executing the file, uh, and I'm going to show you what actually happens uh, or how the sample actually works. So there we go. Our console application starts. It is requesting first the admin URL of the tenant. Uh, so let's actually fill up that one. So there we go. That's my admin URL to my tenant. Uh, it is then asking what's my name uh, or the account which we're going to use to connect to that admin URL. Uh, let's uh, also add the password and then it's going to ask me, okay, excellent, I'm ready to go. Where's the file which I need to process? So you need to ensure that the file is located somewhere in the SharePoint tenant, uh, which you want to target uh, those changes to. So let's actually write that. Uh, Vesache sharepoint.com slash site slash team slash docs slash sample dot txt. And that was the location of the sample file, uh, which we will process. And also the, the location of the, of the sample file will define where the locks will be then uh, down, uh, uh, added as well. So they will be added on that same document library if there's any exceptions. So let's start executing. Uh, we're hitting a, a first breakpoint. Uh, so we're connecting to the, well, first of all, we are, we are uh, connecting to the uh, tenant uh, site and this is just to, to check the connectivity and permissions as so we're able to actually get that information outside of the tenant. Uh, there we go, uh, we have a title tenant administration uh, site which is correct. Then we, need, uh, then we actually concentrate on the real code uh, which is having the new API. So we take an instance on Office 365 tenant, uh, we load that one uh, which not, is not necessarily even actually needed. Uh, but the key APIs and, and methods are within that object. The next thing to do is to, is to tell for the code or the, the user profile patch import process what kind of identity we want to match or uh, the, the user profile within the 
uh, within the SharePoint uh, site or within the SharePoint uh, user profile store. And let's quickly have a look on the uh, JSON format. So in this case, we're going to use email. Uh, and essentially what we're doing here is that we're saying that the ID name attribute uh, is an email. It could be cloud ID. It could be something else as well. So there's a few different options uh, to use here as the, uh, as the, the identifier for the account which you want to target uh, the matching. Uh, and then we're saying that uh, the property within the TXT file is ID name. It could be again anything, uh, that, but that's the lookup key uh, for the identity. And then we are defining what kind of values we have within the JSON file. Uh, and in this case, we have a property one and property two. And then we're saying to which user profile service uh, property properties will match those values. So let's again jump back on the sample TXT and have a look on this one. We have a property one uh, or property one and property two, and that seems to be an office and that seems to be something else. Or that seems to be the city and that seems to be office. So the property one will be then mapped uh, to city and the property two will be mapped to office. So uh, the, the processing will then know which of the, which of the entries will be mat, mapped to which user profile properties. And then we are calling the queue import profile properties. So we're bypassing the user profile uh, ident identity type, the, what's the lookup key, what's the property mapping, and the URL to the specific file. At this point, uh, the engine will do some level of checking. It's all, for example, checking that the properties are fine, uh, the properties do exist, and they have the right property values within the user profile store. And that's it. The item has been queued for execution. We do have, uh, and whenever we do that, uh, we will get actually a uh, unique identifier of this user profile property uh, bulk import property job. And we can use that for checking uh, the status of that particular, uh, that particular uh, job. So we do have to do two different ways of doing that. In a tenant object, uh, we do have a get import property job with the work item ID. And so we're giving that ID which we just get, got and load that one from the tenant. Um, and in this case, uh, we're then getting an input uh, of that particular uh, status of that particular execution. Uh, and we can see that it's test ID, the request uh, status is submitted, error status is no error. So nothing has been yet executed, so there's no errors on the execution. Or we could actually query all of the user profile import jobs, um, and that's what with the get import profile property jobs, and that's going to then return numerous jobs which have been executing within my tenant. So we can actually get all of those out uh, in the console application. So there's like five or four, uh, four of those. And that's, on, that's it uh, from an API perspective. So we can see actually that in my case, um, that we have uh, four individual executions within my tenant. Um, one of them is the sub, in the submitted status, and that's the same one which we specifically queried and using that specific give me a one job status. These previous executions uh, have um, returned a an exception and with the error status of import complete with error. So there has been an except execution or an exception uh, when the files have been imported. And let's actually have a look on that one quickly. So if we continue, uh, or I'll just quickly do an enter there so we can shut down the, the execution and let's move back on the, on the browser. So whenever there's an exception on, on importing any of those JSON files, if for example, the JSON file format is wrong, or if there's an identity which we cannot match within this particular tenant, we will actually get a folder automatically created in, this, uh, in the same folder where we had that source file. So that folder is, is for a one specific execution. And if we go to the folder itself, uh, we are able to see additional log information. So if I open up this file, uh, and let's open up that one in a notepad, uh, we're able to then see uh, the actual details around uh, the, the exception which has happened. And this was pretty much as expected, because in the sample file, we have a 
uh, email, which I know that doesn't exist within my tenant. Uh, so the, the processing has happened for all of the identities, which were actually within a tenant, but for this particular identity, it result, uh, resulted an identity not resolvable exception. Uh, so you can actually follow up on, on if you have, let's say, mistakes within the source file or identities, so you get all of that information within these logs. And that's pretty much it uh, from the API perspective. Relatively simple set of APIs, uh, how to queue up the ID, uh, how to queue up the jobs, uh, how, to, how to then map the things. The one thing maybe to still uh, show as well, as part of the sample, uh, we absolutely have a sample how to do the, exactly the same thing using just native uh, PowerShell which is actually taking advantage of the CSM assemblies as well. So you don't have to write any code. Uh, you can modify the script uh, to match your environment, uh, and you can see pretty much the same structure within the source code. So we're saying that the identity is email. We're saying um, that the, the, the lookup key is specific, which in this game seems to be actually not matching. So we need to update that for the sample uh, on the, uh, still before the video goes live. Uh, and we have the property one, property two, city and office uh, is, the, is the target. But you can absolutely use the PowerShell to execute this as well. And there's an example also to, to get the status of particular item. Oh, sorry, this is queuing up of the, of the file properties and then you would be able to use that uh, work item ID to check also the status of that particular execution. But in the sample, you'll find uh, readme file documentation and uh, references to additional blog posts uh, or related on this particular functionality. But that's it. Thanks for your time. And thanks for watching. And hopefully you'll find this uh, useful. Thank you.